this video we'll look at manifolds, the mathematical idea of a manifold and how it's formally defined. And it will also provide an example of a change of coordinates as a mapping between open sets. So let's begin with an intuitive notion. So we can think of a manifold as a topological space that locally looks like Euclidean space with all its, its usual associated topology. So throughout this video you can think of a manifold as picking any point on a manifold and around that point locally the manifold looks Euclidean. So there's an intuitive idea to, to um, keep in mind as we go. So a topological space set of points along with a set of neighbourhoods for each point. Um, N-dimensional manifold has a neighbourhood that is homeomorphic to a, to a Euclidean space of dimension N where the homeomorphism idea is that of a continuous function that maps one topological space to another and has a continuous inverse function. Alright, now for some definitions. A Hausdorff space, topological space in which distinct points have disconnected neighbourhoods. The diagram of that below shows you that. Two sets there, U and V. So you've got two points X and Y in some topological space, each with their own neighbourhoods. That is, the neighbourhood of X is U and the neighbourhood of Y is V. Then we can say that the intersection of the set U with the set V is the null set, so that these two sets are disjoint. There's no overlap. And the picture demonstrates that. Then we have a base. Or basis means that for any topological space T with some topology X on it, there is a collection of open sets in X such that every open set in X can be written as a union of elements of the base. For example, the collection of all open intervals on the real line forms a base for a topology on the real line. Because the intersection of any two open intervals is itself an open interval, or it's empty if they're disjoint uh, intervals. Another example is the collection of open balls that forms a base for a metric topology on Euclidean space, where a metric topology or metric space is a set for which distances between all members of the set are defined. And when you think of an open ball, before we look at the definition there, just think of an open ball, maybe think of a sphere. All the points in that sphere are included except for the points on the surface of the sphere. So an open ball in uh, n-dimensional space, in n-dimensional Euclidean space with radius r, centred around some point y, with coordinates y1 up to yn, depending on what dimension space you're in, consists of the points x such that the modulus of x minus r is less than, x minus y, sorry, is less than r where R is the radius of the sphere. So everything, all the interior points are included in the sphere, just not the points on the surface. And the rule for that you can see at the bottom. So a countable set is a set with the same number of elements as some subset of natural numbers. That is, it can be finite or infinite, but each element can be mapped to a natural number, so you can count the things in it. Compact means a subset of Euclidean space that is finite and closed because it includes the endpoints. And sigma compact means a union of countably many compact subspaces. A power compact space is a topological space in which every open cover has an open refinement that is locally finite. There's a couple of words there, so we'll have to go through those. A cover is an open set. Uh, of an open set X is a collection of open subsets of X whose union contains X. So that's all a cover means. It sort of covers the, the space. A refinement of a cover of a space X is a new cover of the same space such that every set in the new cover is a subset of some set in the old cover. And an open cover of a space X is locally finite if every point of the space has a neighbourhood that intersects only finitely many sets in the cover.
some examples of manifolds. In one dimension, you've got uh, lines and circles, but not shapes where lines cross each other, since the crossing points are not homeomorphic to some uh, one-dimensional Euclidean space. Um, that is, there's no one-to-one -one mapping and consequently no inverse of the crossing points, so you don't want lines that cross each other. Uh, in two dimensions, you've got manifolds and glue surfaces, such as a plane, sphere, torus, and the Klein bottle, among others, the surface of the sphere that is in the torus. Uh, in physics, a manifold can be any set of points that can be continuously parameterized by any number of independent variables. So, for example, the phase space of a particle in classical mechanics using its three position coordinates and its three momentum coordinates forms a six-dimensional manifold. Now for the formal de definition of a manifold, so here we go, an n-dimensional topological manifold M is a topological Hausdorff space with a countable base that is locally homeomorphic to n-dimensional Euclidean space. This means that for every point P in M, you can see P over here on the manifold M, there is an open neighbourhood U of P, so all this open neighbourhood here, and yeah, an open set containing all these points here, but not the boundary points. Open neighbourhood U of P and a homeomorphism, that's a mapping, that takes the set U into the set V in Euclidean space. So which maps the set U onto an open set V contained in n-dimensional Euclidean space. So that's an n-dimensional topological manifold. A topological manifold also has the properties of being sigma compact and para compact, with the number of its con connected components being countable or denumerable, so not infinite. Or one to one mapping with the natural numbers, I should say. Right, the mapping F that takes this, the open set U into the open set V is called a chart or a coordinate system. The set U is a domain or local coordinate neighbourhood of the chart. The set V is the image of the set U under this one-to-one -one and onto mapping. And the image of the point P, however many coordinates specify the point P, belongs to the set U with coordinates Xn, is the point F of P, the image point, belonging to n-dimensional Euclidean, Euclidean space and is called the coordinates of P in the chart. So that's the coordinates that make up the point P in the chart. A set of charts, so this blue thing up here is one chart, a set of charts with domains U alpha, that's this open set U here, is called an atlas of M. If the union of all of these charts together gives you the manifold M, it's an atlas. So all the charts that cover this entire manifold here is, are called an atlas, however many charts it takes to cover the entire manifold. Uh, okay, so some of those charts then will intersect. If they cover all of the manifold, some of them are going to intersect. So on the manifold here, we've got two open sets that overlap. So what happens when they are mapped to Euclidean space? So here's one mapping from U alpha to V alpha in Euclidean space. So n-dimensional manifold maps to n-dimensional Euclidean space. U beta, this set here, maps to V beta, right, with this mapping F beta. So F alpha and F beta are two charts. Then on the intersection of domains, U alpha intersection U beta, there exists another homeomorphism, another mapping, which takes these points into this point. So it takes the points in this set here into that point there. And that, that mapping is a composition of the two original mappings, F beta and the inverse of F alpha.
So that mapping gives a relation between the coordinate coordinates in the two charts and it's called a coordinate transformation or just a change of coordinates. So an example here, stereographic projection. So let's take the two sphere as our manifold, that is all the points x, y, z that belong to uh, a three-dimensional Euclidean space, uh, subject to the rule x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared, so some sphere of radius a, and project each point on the sphere onto the, onto the plane z equals minus a down here. So we draw this line from the north pole until we intersect the sphere, and then extend that line in a straight line to the point P dash on our plane Z equals minus A. So that's how we map all the points on the sphere onto a flat plane. All points except, of course, the North Pole. So that atlas covers almost all points on the sphere except for the North Pole. So let the coordinates on the plane be P dash, capital X, uh, P dash, of, and whose coordinates are capital X, capital Y. And given that the point N P and P dash all lie on a straight line. I'll just show you the previous page. So N, P, P dash all lie on a straight line. Uh, then we must have that P dash minus N is T times P minus N, where T is some positive real number. If you do a bit of algebra, which I'm not going to go through here, but if you do a bit, you'll find that we've mapped the surface of the sphere to the plane whose coordinates are on the R2 surface, two dimensionally including surfaces, capital S, capital Y. These coordinates here in terms of the original coordinates on the manifold. This is the mapping which takes the um, small xyz coordinates on the manifold to R2, these coordinates here. The inverse mapping takes us back the other way. Right, back to the original coordinates. Uh, now what we're going to try and do is map the plane, map uh, the sphere onto the plane z equals plus a. So that's a plane above the sphere we had in the earlier page, on the earlier page, and project from the south pole. And when we do that, we get coordinates u and v, are related to the original coordinates on the manifold here. This is the uh, mapping which takes them from the manifold to the um, plane z equals a, and a coordinate transformation f alpha beta from x y to u v. So the domain is xy, the image is uv, that mapping is this one here. And we said that's a composition of two maps. And that's how we get from xy to uv. And we have there our mapping, a coordinate transformation. So that's a coordinate transformation between two charts.